Hey there guys, so as I speak right now actually, Man United have just agreed a fee for Rafael Varane and they've also just signed Jane Sancho. These are two great signs for Man United in my opinion. These are signs that they want to challenge for the Premier League and want to win the Premier League next season. But will it be enough to close the gap on the Man City's, the Liverpool's? I don't know. But if we have a look at the current squad, it should at least challenge for the Premier League. Now if we look at the current squad, the potential back four that they could have next season would be Shaw, uh, Wan-Bissaka and then Maguire and Varane at the back. Now on paper that back four is one of the best defences in the league in my opinion. Uh, you've just got two players in that back four of Shaw and Maguire just coming off two great performances in the Euros. Uh, overall, and you've also got Wan Bissaka, who is one of the most solid, consistent right backs in the Premier League. And the addition of Varane is a great addition for this Man United team. First of all, he's a world class defender, but secondly, he brings that winning mentality to Man United and this Man United team, which hasn't won anything in a few years recently. And the question is whether they can work as a unit together. Now, if we go into the attack, it's a very young, exciting attack they've got. So they've got a long, lot of longevity, sorry, in that attack. Um, so you've got Sancho, who's early 20s, same with Rashford, and then you've got Greenwood, who's 19, I think. So they've got a lot of young players and very exciting players. Very direct, very quick, very fast, very dynamic. Uh, and they've also got a wide variety of options up there as well. That's good for uh, Man United if, say, if they're 1-0 down and they need to get a goal, they've got options on the bench. So they've got a Martial on the bench, they've got probably a good have a Cavani on the bench maybe. Where Man United falter, in my opinion, and what they miss is a midfielder in that area, like in the defensive sort of midfield. So if they got a Ndidi or a Rice and they took out McTominay and put a Rice and Ndidi in there, that would be a great addition, just someone to break up the play and protect that back four. Uh, and the other thing that needs to be sorted out for Man United would be the goal, goal sorry, would be the goalkeeper situation. The goalkeeper situation needs to be sorted out, it really does. It all he needs to decide if it's gonna be Dean Henderson or it's gonna be uh, David De Gea. And if it is David De Gea, whether it'll be the De Gea of a few seasons ago who basically every season was winning Man United's player of the season, which is mental. Or will it be the recent De Gea who's been making quite a few errors and mistakes? Now, speaking of Oli, I'll be the first to admit, I'll definitely be the first to admit, I thought Oli was done. I thought it was just a matter of time before he would lose his job. But he's proved a lot of people wrong, and he's proved me wrong especially. And he's actually done a pretty good job, well not a pretty good job, he's done a really good job at Man United. When he first came in, he had to steady the ship of Mourinho and what Mourinho done. He was able to get rid of a lot of the older players and the players that just didn't work out at Man United. So you've got your Lukaku's, you've got your Young's, you've got your uh, your Alexis Sanchez's, uh, your Fellaini's. And he's also made some great additions like Maguire who I've talked about and Juan Bissaka. But he's also bought Bruno Fernandes, what a player he is. Probably Man United's best player now. Great signing for, uh, from Oli there. He's also just brought a lot of morale up in the Man United team. And the players seem to like playing for him. And you can tell because every time it seems like he might get sacked, they seem to dig him out of the, of like the situation because they get a win or they go on a winning run. So they like playing under Oli. It's just whether he can take them to the next level. But under Oli, they've continued to progress. They got to, uh, they finished sixth in his first like half season. Then the next season they got third in the 1920 season. And then last season, they got to the Europa League final and they finished second. I think it was maybe 12, somewhere like that, behind Man, 12 points behind Man City. So it's continuous progress under Oli. But as much as he's made progress, there is still some like glaring errors that you can see. He's just, a, he's not like the guy to take my United to the next like win something in my opinion. Like he won't. I don't think he will lead my United to a a Champions League win or say a Premier League win. 
I think he could win an FA Cup or a Carabao Cup, but I don't think he can win like the big ones, like the, the Premier League and the sorry, Premier League and the Champions League. Another thing I'd say about Oli is when he comes up against a top class manager, sometimes he just gets absolutely out tacticked, is that a word? Out tacticked by just a better manager in general. Because he's he's learning his trade still, Oli, so you can see that he's just not at that top, top level yet. I'm not saying that he can never get there, but he's just not ready yet to win a Premier League or a Champions League, in my opinion, with this Man United team. Another area where you see Oli making a few errors is his substitutes. Sometimes he waits a bit too long when he makes the wrong sub. Also, the consistent losing of finals, are, well, finals and semi-finals. He's not actually won a trophy yet, Man United. And Man United need to win trophies. It's in their DNA to win trophies. So, is the Man United manager position holding Man United back from success? And I think that if you give, I don't know, like an Antonio Conte or a Pep or a Klopp, this Man United team, including Varane, I think they would get more out of it than Ollie's doing. I'm not saying Ollie's doing a bad job, I just don't think he can take them to the next level. He's built a good team, Wally. He's built all the tools. All the tools are there. All the players are there. So it's like a toolbox. All the tools are there. They just need the correct guy to use them correctly to take them to the next level. What is a successful season for Man United? Well, if I was a Man United fan, I would be wanting at least to challenge or so show signs of challenging. So let's say they get to April and they're in the race until April, but they fall off at the final bit. I'd say that's a bit of progress from Wally there because they were never in it last season anyway. Man City ran away with it. Uh, but another key thing I think for Ollie to keep the Man United fans on side and have a good season is also to win something because he's not won anything yet. He's obviously got the, the big mistake that he made recently in the Europa League final. He probably and should have probably won the Europa League final. Uh, but he'll be. I think he should look to try and win something. So maybe an FA Cup, something like that. Just win a trophy and maybe challenge for the Premier League. And now I will answer the title of the video: Will Man United win the Premier League next season? Now, Man United will challenge for the Premier League next season, I believe. But I do not believe that they will win the Premier League next season. Sorry, my United fans. I just don't see it happening, getting past a City team who looks really good. And they get Kane. That's going to be a great team. Got Chelsea on the rise after beating Man City in the Champions League final. And you've got Liverpool, who will probably bounce back. I'd say these three teams are still better than them. But I think they will be in the race. I think they will be in the race for the title. So guys, leave comments on what you think Man United will be doing next season and whether they will win the Premier League next season in your opinion. Thanks guys for watching, like and subscribe guys and I'll see you later.